Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to carry on with the programme for Jeep Talks 2019. And we have our first of our four Vox Pop speakers today. And uh, let me just quickly explain what the Vox Pop feature is. Basically, what we do is we give, um, f we have these four 10 minute slots that we offer to just any member of the community to um, apply for. So instead of um, um, kind of us, us make, uh, choosing to be part of the program, you can apply and get a place in, in, on the Jib Talk stage to talk about an issue that might be very close to your heart. And the, our next speaker is going to be talking about an issue that is certainly very close to his heart. And he's made it, he's made it his life task to raise awareness, to pressure, governments and agencies into understanding more about dyslexia. So please welcome on stage Stuart Byrne. Hi everyone, I want to start off by asking you all a question. So if I can see your hands, um, please put up your hands, I will, I'll call upon you. Are you up for it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, can you name one of the cleverest people to have ever lived? Anyone? Einstein. Einstein, yes. Einstein is often given... Sorry, just a second, technical difficulty. Einstein is often given um, that title of one of the cleverest people to have ever lived. Um, you know what, what his teachers uh, said about him? Change. Change the next, the next one. Yeah, thanks. Um, that he would never be able to do anything that would ever make any sense in life. You believe that of Einstein, yeah? Um, Einstein also said, I would feel under such strain that I felt, rather than going to a test, that instead I was walking to the guillotine. Teachers also thought that he asked too many questions and that he found learning difficult. What about Steve Jobs? Was he clever? Yes. Some may even say he was a genius. So was Einstein disadvantaged? Or Steve Jobs, was he disadvantaged? Well, both of them were dyslexic. How does a society measure intelligence? What makes someone clever? What would the world look like if intelligence was not judged by how well we read, write, or spell. Is dyslexia really a disability or a disadvantage? Let's look at the word itself. The word dyslexia is a funny word to describe the way our brain works. Yes, I use the right side of my brain more, and I have struggled with reading, writing, and spelling. I am dyslexic. Would you have guessed it? No, probably not. As being dyslexic does not mean that I have a visually obvious physical disability. Some may even say it's not a disability at all, but just a different way of learning or thinking. Anyway, let's go back to the word. Dyslexia. This means difficulty or difficult and lexia means words. So it's difficulty with words or language. Now this may be the case for many dyslexic people, but it's just the scratch. It just scratches the surface of what a dyslexic person is like. It is also a very negative way to look at someone and just looking at their struggles with reading, writing, and spelling. We should change the name to something that highlights their strengths and their gifts. We, are very good, we have very good spatial awareness and highly aware of our surroundings. We are more curious than average. We think mainly in pictures instead of words. We are highly intuitive and insightful, and we can experience thought as reality. We have very vivid imaginations. All these traits make us very creative and very good problem solvers. So why do we struggle at school, I hear you ask? Well, just close your eyes a moment with me. Just think back. A long time ago, generation upon generation, parents would teach their children the important things they needed to know. How would they do it? 
Yes, by showing them. They would do it hands-on style. Was there reading and writing involved? Probably not. Would have this been a problem for a dyslexic person? Not at all. It would have been the best way to teach. So why did we change it? Something that worked fine. Why did we change it? I'll tell you why. Because about 600 years ago, in the 1400s, the printing press was invented. The world would change. The way we taught changed completely. And by the 1600s, schools were using the printed word to pass on information. How many of you here in this auditorium did apprenticeships back in the day? I can't see you, but hopefully a few. How many of you think apprenticeships should be uh, you know, more uh, accessible nowadays? Yeah, many people come out of school without the necessary qualifications to get a job. Are all these people stupid or incapable of getting a job? I would bet that with the right support and teaching, they could. For example, some of these kinds of people could probably fix your car, take an engine apart and put it back together, but not be able to read a book on the subject. Maybe, they, maybe you have someone who could cook or create an amazing meal or dish, but struggle to write down exactly what they've created in their imagination. Or a plumber who's come in and installed, you know, all the plumbing problems, solved all the plumbing problems that you, you thought weren't impossible, but can't read the instruction manual of the boiler they've just installed. Put these kinds of people in a room and ask them to write about what they do, about their jobs. They may panic. Ask them to do an exam on them. They would freeze. Ask them to show someone. Ask them to talk through it with someone. And they will light up. Come out their shells and shine. Some may be dyslexic and suffer with low self-esteem. Even think that they are stupid. That is why I explain just because someone may struggle with reading, writing, and spelling does not mean they cannot succeed in life, or indeed in the workplace. Often recognizing and understanding dyslexia is the first step to overcoming your difficulties. As a chairperson of the Gibraltar Dyslexia Support Group, I get a lot of calls from parents. I remind them that dyslexia often runs in families, and even though it may not be obvious to the untrained eye, our parents or our grandparents may have been unrecognized dyslexics. In my family, it's rife. Maybe more than the average 10%. <laughs> yes, 10% is the average. But I'm sure in my family, it's more like 40%. <laughs> I think more of my cousins, my uncles and aunties are dyslexics than aren't. But maybe that's just me. Many entrepreneurs blossom later on in life. A great deal of self-made millionaires are dyslexic. Many of them don't even have a fancy degree. Some were school dropouts. Maybe you are thinking about someone right now that may be dyslexic. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's you. Remember that the stats show that in this auditorium there should be at least 30 dyslexic people with varying degrees of dyslexia. So let's look at the lights of Einstein and Jobs as role models. For what people, may, uh, well, for what people might have struggled at school to do, let's remember that reading is not the only way to learn, and in the grand scheme of things is in the world's history is fairly recent. Let's change the way we look at people who struggle with reading, writing, and spelling. Let's not look down on them. Who knows, they may be the next Tesla, Steven Spielberg, Agatha Christie, or Walt Disney. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stuart Byrne.